Avery says last Friday you took the afternoon off. He figures you might have been with another woman. The death of love and trust. Imagine her one day opening that. Go ahead, take a look. Not just screwing, Mitch. The kind of intimate acts, oral and whatnot. It could be particularly hard for a trusting young wife to forgive and impossible to forget. Devastating. Seamus, uh, welcome to the show and um, Happy New Year. Wow, Benny, that was an epic uh, beginning to your show. Loved it. God bless you for covering this important issue. This is some serious stuff. Happy New Year. Glad to be with you. Everybody, I'm sure, is glad you're back. And uh, thank you for having me. So you have written this book. I actually have a copy in, 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 my, in my home brought to me by a mutual friend of ours, Kurt. And uh, it is fascinating. You do a very authoritative deep dive into the oligarchy that runs this nation and an oligarchy that is utterly uh, 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 caught up in a scandal right now that they are so desperately trying to capture, kill, suffocate, and destroy this Epstein scandal. But you dive a lot farther into it, saying that there are lists that exist. We haven't even scratched the surface here. Can you expound? Sure. So uh, for those who don't know me, I work with a gentleman, Peter Schweitzer. We did books like Clinton Cash and Secret Empires, exposing the Clintons, the Bidens. I did a book, Compromised, How Money and Politics Drive FBI Corruption. And our motto is to follow the money. And so for the Clintons, we followed it to the Clinton Foundation. To the Bidens, we followed it to Burisma and to the China energy deals. Uh, for the Compromised book, I followed the money to the top of the FBI and James Comey, Robert Mueller. And for this book, Controligarchs, decided to follow it even further all the way to the top. A lot of us have this feeling that the politicians are really sort of puppets. I mean, a lot of people, you don't think that Joe Biden's making all the decisions and he's not. And so for this book, I followed it to Davos, to people like Bill Gates uh, and Klaus Schwab, George Soros, Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos. And naturally, there's uh, big ex Epstein connections to all of these people at mm. the top. Mm. So, so where is the real Epstein list? And like, more importantly, uh, who's hiding this? As you, as you just detailed, you've gone really deep into the FBI. The FBI went really deep into capturing all of Jeffrey Epstein's assets and refused to even give those over. We found this out in some of the document drops to the victims. Why would you, why would you hide that from the victims? Presumably Jeffrey Epstein was, had information and videotape of the victims. You'd assume that they would at the very least have a right to that. Um, what's the FBI's culpability here? Total, total. The FBI is the number one place who can tell us who Jeffrey Epstein's clients are. They are the agency that has failed to prosecute. These are mm -hmm. man act violations, tra transporting, uh, especially underage women, but women of any kind for prostitution purposes across state lines, outside of the U.S., to the island. The FBI knows everything. They have all the documents. They have all of the tapes, all of the blackmail tapes. I mean, we know that Jeffrey Epstein's properties were wired up like Christmas trees, and we know that the FBI raided those properties, stole those tapes. You showed the, the photos before. There was a giant safe, like a vault, that held all, all the blackmail materials. And so the FBI is in possession of all of that. Now, there's another agent. Agency, and I talk about this in the book that has the uh, information on Epstein's clients. That would be the Treasury Department, because mm. like I said, following the money is critical here for these Epstein crimes. H how did he get paid? Who paid him? Wh how much did they pay him? Now, we know that he banked with a bank, JP Morgan, the largest bank, uh, most powerful bank in the United States, probably uh, certainly up there. And so Jeffrey Epstein was a client with J.P. Morgan for a long time, uh, over a decade, 16 years that he worked with J.P. Morgan. And J.P. Morgan facilitated the payments for the prostitution. We know that from court records. Now, uh, in 2022, uh, J.P. Morgan was sued by Jeffrey Epstein's victims. They said that the bank helped Jeffrey Epstein, uh, you know, facilitated the prostitution payments. Well, in order to avoid going to trial, J.P. Morgan just this past year in 2023 paid a massive settlement. I mean, they paid a combined 
$365 million settlement. That's a huge settlement to avoid going to trial. Now, why would they want to avoid going to trial? Because they facilitated a billion dollars worth of uh, payments that have been linked to, quote, human trafficking. And so we found out in the trial, they've turned over this information to the Treasury Department so that now we've got three people who we know for sure know who Jeffrey Epstein's clients are. That's the FBI. There, then there's the Treasury Department who got the JP Morgan Bank transfers. And then JP Morgan knows who the clients are. And so JP Morgan needs to come clean on all of this and they should uh, release the names of the clients who paid Jeffrey Epstein for trafficking. So where'd the money come from? Like you, you just said a billion dollars facilitated to the trafficking of these young women that, that Epstein paid. How, how did Jeffrey Epstein become a billionaire? Where's this money coming from? This is like, Again, as somebody who's as somebody who um, I'm certainly not a wealthy man, nor do I come from wealth. Uh, but you know, there you end up in these political circles, brushing shoulders with big time donors and stuff like that. And some of them do have a billion dollars. They don't have private islands, the most expensive house in New York, the most expensive house in London, uh, entire counties uh, for a ranch in New Mexico. They don't have they don't have jets the size of Jeffrey Epstein. Where the hell did all this money from, come from? What? was the product he was selling. Yeah, that's a critical question. I mean, it reminds you of the Bidens. What product are they selling to pull in all of this money? And so for Jeffrey Epstein, I mean, it's a lot more money than the Bidens. It's a billion dollars plus. And so he's yes. hanging around. I mean, I'm not going to uh, accuse anyone of pedophilia without evidence here, but he is hanging out with the richest, most powerful people in the world. Everyone knows that people like Bill Gates and uh, actually Sergey Brin, the head of Google, uh, was was advised by Jeffrey Epstein. Leon Black of a uh, Apollo Global Management, one of the most wealthy and powerful firms on Wall Street. Uh, Leslie Wexner, the head of Victoria's Secret, was like the seed angel investor, seed money investor in Jeffrey Epstein's uh, investment fund, and uh, he actually is the one who gave. Epstein, the most valuable property in Manhattan at one mm. point, the, the the townhouse where a lot of people visited and Ahud Barak visited 30 times. And, uh, you know, all these people from all around the world, uh, you know, world leaders and ambassadors and, and many billionaires, that's who paid him. And the question, I mean, it's kind of the answer staring you in the face, but you can't accuse these people. Uh, they've all denied knowledge of any of Jeffrey Epstein's crimes. And so uh, that's where it comes back to the FBI. The FBI has the evidence uh, and J.P. Morgan has the evidence. So J.P. Morgan has paid dearly. Uh, it seems like Jelaine Maxwell will spend a considerable portion of the rest of her life in prison. Jeffrey Epstein was killed by Hillary in the cell when they flipped the cameras off. And uh, the only people who seem to have not actually paid in full have been the clients of Jeffrey Epstein. Well, yeah, that's exact. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, that's that's the real travesty of justice here is because Jeffrey Epstein's gone, Ghislaine's locked away. Uh, but you've got all these people. I mean, it's the first time in history that someone's ind indicted or you know charged and pled guilty to trafficking people to nobody. And it's the same thing with the bank transfers. I'll just keep going back to follow the money. Like you can't receive money from no one. There is another party on the other end of that transfer to Jeffrey Epstein, and we need to know those names. They need to be charged. Yeah. yeah, that's right. If there's an illegal arms deal, then you charge both both entities, right? There's the dealer, and then there's people buying, and the dealer wouldn't have any, the dealer needs a customer. The customer is also committing a crime. It's all illegal. And so you 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 sanction both of them, or you, you blow both of them, you know, like you go after both of them militarily, depending on what the trade is. Even if it's just a drug deal, the using of the drugs is also illegal. The drug dealer has no he has no business unless there's a user, right? And maybe he creates the user uh, through those practices. Either way, the user is a part of that transaction and deserves to also be charged in order to shut the entire thing down, right? Yeah, exactly right. And uh, it, there's actually another Clinton connection here. I mean, when Bill Clinton was president, uh, it, his Department of Justice, it was Eric Holder, the deputy attorney general at the time, came out. He basically set it up so that all of the big fish will never fry, uh, whether it's this or other huge scandals. If you wonder why the big mm. fish never seem to get caught, they never seem to fry. It's because Eric Holder, when he was in the 
uh, President Clinton administration, he drafted this memo that reigns supreme at DOJ to this day. It's called the Collateral Consequences Memo. And this memo, I mean, it cannot be overstated how bad this thing is. What it basically said, and it's the policy at the Justice Department, is if the collateral consequences, if the, if the consequences of prosecuting someone uh, have big ripple effects and it can and take down the system. I mean, you were talking about it earlier. The whole system, this could bring down the whole system. And yes. so the collateral consequences memo that Eric Holder drafted uh, says that if the, the consequences could bring down the system, it's best not to prosecute. And so you can bet that that memo is actually what prevents the DOJ in a lot of ways saying, well, it's actually best that we sweep this under the rug. We'll give immunity agreements. You see this uh, like when Hillary Clinton's emails can't come out and uh, all of her staff have to testify against her. They give them immunity agreements and everybody gets hit with an immune agree immunity agreement. And so the DOJ and the FBI, they find out what's going on. They gain the control and the leverage over people, but then they never prosecute. And so that memo needs to be thrown out uh, so that we can really bring down the system in a lot of ways. The corrupt, That's amazing. rotten, <laughs> decaying system. I've heard I've heard of this. It's up on it's up on screen right now. Um I've 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 heard of this. I need to go in harder on this memo. You're exactly right. Like what th so this was written during the Clinton era by Eric Holder. Remarkable. And then this of course uh, applies to the Bidens. This of course applies to to so the elites can do whatever they want. This is this literally is the protection of the elites and they go after Donald Trump for literally not recycling his soda pop can his can of diet coke because he's not one of them. He didn't engage in these immoral practices. He wasn't part of the club. He helped put, he's the only guy who put Jeffrey Epstein in prison, right? He like helped the lawyer to put him in jail. And so that's why they go, there's no collateral consequences for going after Trump. That's what you can deduce from this. Yeah, exactly right. It's basically during the Clinton administration, they wrote a perpetual endless get out of jail free card for themselves with no expiration date. And yeah, I mean, Donald Trump is a threat to the system. So he must be prosecuted. He must yes. be taken out. Wow. He's like a, like a virus and the entire system is a, an immunity system. Uh, you know, it's like an immune system attacking mm -hmm. the virus, uh, mm -hmm. not to call Donald Trump a virus, but uh, you know, it works like that. They are all from the media to Hollywood, to corporate America, to both parties, they are attacking him with like relentless force because he's a threat to their system. Incredible. Control oligarchs, ladies and gentlemen, Control oligarchs is the book. Uh, you should go pick up a copy today. It's uh, spectacular. We have the link actually for the book right now. You can find it at controloligarchsbook.com uh, and kind of exposes uh, the real power structures in the nation um, that deserve to fall and deserve to collapse and could be brought down by a scandal like this. <laughs> if they hadn't have written their own immunity into the law, what? how asleep is this country? How asleep are we that we allow them to do something like this? It's so insulting. It's so insulting to us, the rest of us. It's so insulting to our founders who never intended this to happen. Uh, thank you, Seamus. Godspeed. Yeah, God bless you, Betty. Thank you. <laughs>